It says for your first game, we recommend using the scoring cards uh, with the A in the bottom right. Well, I did not do that, so I may have just made it harder on myself. We'll see what happens. I'm going to have fun regardless. We're going to distribute one starter habitat tile to each player. So, as you can see, I'm shuffling those right now. I'm going to give myself one. The rest going to go to the box. And we're going to start forming the stack rows, which... I think the way I had it, these cards will not fit into this view. So I'm going to be doing my uh, rows over here. Hopefully they stay within view. And then I'll have a tile bag over here for now. Let's see what the scoring cards are going to be. So for the elk, we're going to be playing rings. So we're going to score per group of elk in a circular formation. Each elk may only score for a single group. Put that there. Next up, the fox. We're going to be playing for nearby pairs. Scores for each fox. Number of unique adjacent animal pairs. Foxes do not count. So we want to get a single fox and get pairs around that fox. Red tail hox. We're going to be playing the Territorial, so this is going to be scoring for each pair of hawks. Number of unique animals between each hawk, and each hawk can only be used once, creating a line of sight between hawks. So this is the, the Elk Rings card is D, Fox is B, Red Tail Hawk is D right now. So let's see what we get for the bear, Grizzly Bear. This is going to be the Families, this is the C scoring card. This is for scores per group of bears with no other bears next to it. Uh, in groups of single, double, triple. Um, you can get bonus if you have all three sizes as well. Last but not least, we have our salmon who like to be surrounded. Uh, so scores per salmon and per animal adjacent to run of at least three runs. Uh, may not, runs may not be adjacent runs. Uh, so the runs have to be at least three long. Okay. And my starting tile is here we go. I have a hawk at the top. It does have a little error to show you which is the top direction. Hawk at the top. A salmon, elk, hawk. Bear, fox option here. Shown. Okay. And then, so we got our four habitat tiles out. It's uh, let's do some minor turning, so that at least relatively face up. We're going to draw four random tokens from the bag and pair them in order with each of the four tiles. So there's one, two, three. Oh, whoa, 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 there's a lot of salmon. Okay, there we go. There's a fox. Salmon, salmon, salmon. Place the nature tokens within easy reach. Done. Let's verify this, any other solo differences. Uh, turn summary. Follow a turn as usual, but before you place the habitat tile and wildlife token, discard the tile and token farthest from the draw stacks and slide the remaining two over. So basically, each time we're going to be removing an extra set. Like kind of, so it's essentially the AI system removing stuff for you. But it's just going to take the farthest, or farthest away from the stack. It's just going to be this left side in this case. If things slide off your screen where you can't see them, yell at me say, hey, I can't see what you're doing. I don't mind. Well, thanks for stopping by while you could be on dead. I, I do hope you have a wonderful evening, a wonderful meal. And look forward to chatting with you more in the future. Okay, so in general, we'll basically take an extra set away each turn. To verify. So end game. So at the if at the end of any player's turn there are no face down habitat tiles left in the stacks to replace the one taken, the game ends. Okay. So basically I get 20 turns. 
So beginning with starting player, but I am the only player, so I am the start player. So we take, uh, gonna draft habitat tile and token. Select a head, plan to environment. Replace. Game ends when there are no habitat tiles available left. Yep. Turn summer. Select a habitat tile and wildlife token, which we have set right here. So currently there are four combinations, kind of above and below each other. That's four different choices before you make a selection check to see if any of the wildlife are overpopulated. If all four of the available wildlife tokens are the same, they're automatically wiped. That's good to know. We were close to that, but it didn't happen. We, uh, if that was the case, we would take all four of those, set them aside, and then draw new ones. If three of the available wildlife tokens are the same, then the active player may choose to wipe. Okay. Well, I have the choice to wipe. Do I want to wipe? I will say no right now, because I'm seeing some decent pairings. I'm seeing some salmon paired together. I also can basically use anything right now. So we select one habitat tile while off token combo. Typically you must take an existing combination. However, before you do, you may optionally spend a nature token, which are the pine cones, and replace uh, da, 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 to do one of the following things. Take any one of the four habitat tiles and any one of the four tokens. So if you spend a token, you can take any combination. Basically choose one, choose one or wipe any number of tokens and replace them. The tokens are the round wooden tokens and not the tiles. No limit on number of nature tokens you may spend on your turn. If you do not have any remaining tokens, you must take an existing combo. Place the tile and token in your environment. Once you have selected your habitat tile and token, you will place them in your environment in any order. Habitat tile must be placed into your environment according to the following placement rules. A. The habitat tile must be placed adjacent to any habitat tile already in your environment. That is, the habitat tile must touch at least one side of another previously placed tile or the starting tile. Easy enough. The habitat tile may not be placed on top of another tile, nor can any other tile be moved. Easy enough. Matching terrain is not a placement rule, but may gain you points during in-game scoring. Okay. The wildlife token may be placed onto a single habitat tile according to the following rules. A habitat tile may not already have a token on it, so one token per tile. Very straightforward and easy. The habitat tile must sh show the matching wildlife. So, like we talked about before, like a hawk can only go on this top one because it only shows a hawk. Bears and foxes go on this side. Salmon, elk, hawk in the bottom. If you cannot legally place the token because no open habitat tile can support the wildlife, or if you choose not to place the token, return the token to the bag, you may place the token onto the habitat tile you just selected on your current turn, or you may place it onto any other available tile. Straightforward, easy. If you place your wildlife token onto a keystone tile, take a nature token. So we will verify what keystones are in a moment. I believe that's most likely with a symbol with the actual pine cone on it here, but we'll verify in the rules in a moment before I get there. And then after you've done your draw in place, that's when you reset the market. We typically pass play. If you're playing with more players, tile overview, each habitat tile has one, two, one or two types of terrain, and one, two, or three wildlife tokens. This, uh, some tiles, um, yeah, if it shows three, you can, three different animals, yeah, you can place any of those three. If it shows two, you can choose between the two. A keystone tile, yeah, is basically going to have the symbol on it that looks like the tokens. And it, as you can tell, it only has a singular 
terrain type in the background and we'll likely only have yeah it looks like they only have the one animal and the rules it's showing it also has an arrow at the top we'll see if they all have arrows or if it's just to help you show directionality either way it'll be fine uh, let's verify what scoring things we need to look for, uh, for besides those cards. So we're going to be scoring the cards. We're going to score habitat tile corridors, corridor majorities, and nature tokens. So for each player, we're going to score the cards first for the score pad at the end. Corridors, habitat corridors. We're going to score one point per habitat tile in our largest continuous habitat corridor. Group of connected habitat type in each of the five habitats. Okay, so creating sets of habitats is also very helpful in this game. Uh, tiles are included in a continuous habitat corridor if they share at least one matching edge of the six edges of the tile. Habitat tile corridor majority. According to player count, score bonus points for having the largest continuous habitat corridor for each of the five habitat types. In a solo game, two point bonus for each habitat type with a group size of seven or more. So that'll be our focus, creating groups of seven or more of the same habitat if we want to score it. And then nature tokens, we're gonna to get points for those as well, it appears. So that's all good information to have when starting the game. And then of course, with the solo variant, there are certain levels depending on how well you do, it kind of says how well you actually did. But I will explain those at the end to see how well we actually do. So it's pretty straightforward. Take a set, place it in your habitat together. Try to create matching sets, be it of runs of creatures or runs of habitats. And we'll go from there. So I'm going to keep the bag here, easy reach. I don't think you can see it on screen. I want to just Keep it close enough you can tell where it is, but not in the way. So you can tell it's right here. So first up, well, I'm going to go salmon. I want to create salmon runs of three. Salmon out there, so I might as well take salmon. Bears or groups of one, two, and three, okay. Foxes want to be surrounded by different types. Of course, the line of sight with the hawks. So a lot of simple choices. It, it may feel overwhelming with the number of choices you have at the beginning of a game. Sometimes you just have to take something, work with it, and then develop a plan as you get more tiles. So I think what I want to do to keep myself having options. Now, keep in mind, we're also going to leave the lose the farthest, in this case, left from these stacks fox and hawk as opposed to a two or three well, i think what i'm going to do is take this three tile and salmon over here because this gives me the most flexibility later and i'm going to start pushing trying to create sets of continuous habitat sorry it's touching an existing tile right here uh, and then of course I got my habitats to match I got a salmon for that I can place it on any of these tiles that show a salmon I know I want to create a salmon run so that's why I wanted salmon next to each other as well so placing on either of these is not a bad option because I am kind of intentionally doing that so I'm just gonna put it right there on that starting one because I see no reason not to now, because of the rules of the solo setup, this farthest from the stack we're going to remove. So I'm losing both of these out of the game. So both of these left existing, slide to the left. Cha cha cha. There's that one. There's going to be that one. Okay, we got a fox and a hawk. 
Ooh, okay. So in this case, what do I want to do? So the salmon run scores per salmon and per animal adjacent to run of at least three. So the salmon needs to be three or longer. As long as the salmon don't end up being adjacent, more than one adjacent, they have to create a, basically a river. Take a look at all of the habitats as well at the same time. Now this green forest, I can continue the habitat. Pick up another salmon option to pick up salmon tall later. This fox, I could either place on it, but I could also place it here, starting for my nearby pairs. Um, but if I did that, I would want salmon here. Unless I took my salmon up that way later, which I might end up doing. So I'm thinking of that, because if I take this salmon, I'd have to create a different habitat type down here. Or break my run. Oh, actually, the salmon. I got green I could touch here. Waterway would touch here. Give me the second salmon. But then I'd lose the fox one, which isn't the worst because there's another fox out there. So I'm going to do that. If you would have done different, let me know. So in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to line up my habitats, continue the grassland, whatever we want to call that one. Actually, it was in the rule book, what they called them. Called it the wetlands. And then I will place the salmon. I'm going to hold off placing the salmon on that one in case I can run this way to help the fox out. So I'm going to place it up here instead. Okay, so we're going to get rid of the next tile and token. Do the cha cha slide. Two more tokens out, or tiles, and then we got our tokens coming out now. Number one is a hawk. And more salmon. Okay, fair enough. Okay, well, I could take that salmon one and really come down this way. Extend my mountain habitat as well. <laughs> yeah, cha-cha real smooth. Yeah. Every time I th think about sliding, it's like, cha-cha <laughs> now. Slide. Slide. <laughs> Couldn't help it. It's kind of one of those puns, dad joke things. When you think of little quotes like that, you just let them get, let them, let them out. Don't hide them. They're more fun that way. Okay, so I know I talked about the fox, but also the habitat isn't as strong a choice. Of course, the hawk is. A, it doesn't hurt to have. But pick up the salmon tile with the salmon. Guarantee my salmon run. And then later grab a fox for here. I think is what I want to do. <laughs> Slide. Uh, what would y'all do in this scenario? Do you agree with the direction I'm taking? Or would you attempt something different in this case? Because, of course, it's, it's hard to score every different single type of thing here. You only get 20 things in total. And so it's hard to set up everything. Because if we talk about three here, if we really want to attempt to go all in on this, that's one, two, three, four, five, six different. That's already nine, nine tokens. Even the, trying to get this, that's three more. That's 12. Add one to this, it's 13. This one would need six, so that's basically 20 right there. So you really have to do perfect planning to get all those scoring cards. So I probably won't get them all. So sometimes you just have to focus on which ones are most valuable. Which in this case, getting a good salmon run, 
potentially all the bear groups because that's eight points getting all three is three so that's eleven at eleven at six tiles see I like the fox one because that's pretty straightforward you can do it with one fox so you'd probably keep with the salmon run so you have those points for sure yeah that's what I was thinking finish the setup on one and then work around that one is typically what I do in this game but we're playing it we're, we're teaching the game we're playing it together we might as well talk through it and see if you would do the same so like we talked about I'm going to still match up my mountains here get my salmon right down on that tile because it, it shows a salmon that's a run of three salmon so I can guarantee working next to it so now I just every animal around that is going to help me score and I've, if I get a fox here, that guarantees at least one pair. We're going to lose the fox out there, though. Do our slide to the left. Two more tiles. Oops. Open. Oh, there's a keystone tile popping out. Okay, we've got more salmon. And we've got another hawk. And the hawk's like line of sight as many different animals between. Okay, well, that's not bad because if I go hawk here, it gets me a keystone. I can work something down here later and hawk lower. So I think that's not a bad option. That would probably be. Elk or salmon, not a hawk, so I don't know. We'll see. Um, yeah, I don't see a need to continue with the salmon run yet. So now it's more about which of the top tiles I would want to pick up, what works for my habitat runs I'm working with. Now this one would work for the forest and waterway system I've created going up this direction that allow me to set a bear later if I wanted to or continue in a circular motion with my elk so I don't think that's a bad option like I said I don't necessarily need more salmon yet keystone but it's salmon only so I do think this is my strongest move I want to pair my hat continue pairing my habitats and go ahead and set down a hawk right here and that's going to earn me a token so it's going to shift the oh, remove that one and then we'll do the shift again almost feel like I want to shake the, the token bag again because I'm not getting... Oh, there we go. There's a fox. I was like, about to say I'm not getting some of the animals. Got another fox. Got an elk peeking out. That's nice. Okay. Well, that fox is what we talked about really wanting to find. It's going to help us the most. And what we want to plan to work around it. So that means we likely want to get a hawk here next to it and then on these spaces I could probably work on bear I think that's what I want to go for so I'll save my keystone option except well this would get me mountain I could go over here, but that's also breaking apart my water system. It has water on it, so I could probably connect into it again. Yeah, I'm going to go that way. So I'm going to do, I'm going to put this here. This is going to allow me to continue my mountains, connect the waters later if I choose to. I'm going to put my fox right there. I'm going to lose this tile. 
do the shift. Well, hello and welcome, Scrappy Kid and Raiders. I do hope everyone is doing well today. I appreciate the raid. How is everyone doing today? Uh, what were you just streaming and what were you up to? I'm currently playing Cascadia. Uh, this just recently arrived. I backed the Kickstarter and just received it last weekend. Scrappy Kid is off to bed. Got to get up in five hours to go to CG tournament. Other side of the country. Whoa. Well, I do hope you get some great rest. Um, and that you're able to travel safely. Since it is... You have to... <laughs> this other side. You're playing Dominion tournament as part of the mind supports. Well, how did that go? Um, did you win? I hope you won at least. Well, if you didn't, did you enjoy yourself and give the other players a run for uh, the top spot? You did bad, but had fun, which is more exactly having fun is more important than how well you or how bad you do. I guess in this case, but ultimately, and getting to enjoy time at the table. Hopefully, you just face-to-face, -face. playing games with other people is always worth the time and effort. Uh, so yeah, we're playing Cascadia. I just actually unboxed it tonight, and I'm working through and learn, learn the solo mode real quick, showing off the game. And then I have an additional copy that I received from the Kickstarter, because I backed it at a higher enough level, that once I hit 100 followers, I plan to give this copy away on Twitch. So share follow as much as you can i appreciate it all um and so even stuff like raids like this bringing in more viewers is really appreciated so thank you very much for being here so i just reset for the round each round we're drawing a tile and a token that's typically in line with each other unless you spend one of these uh well i just blanked on the name was it wildlife tokens i believe it's the name of course, when we start talking about it, you always blank on the names, wildlife token, and that allows you to basically select any pair, one from, from the top and one from the bottom. It's quite the prize. Well, <laughs> yeah, I have fun. Um, I've done some giveaways on my Instagram before. It's been a while since I've done a giveaway, and so I knew when I was backing it that I wanted to get an extra so I can play games and spread joy. That's kind of the point of what I'm doing here, so... When I have the opportunity to and I can afford it, I try to pick up a very good game and spread that joy to others. So this time it's going to be a copy of Cascadia. But like I said, it's only once I hit 100 followers. So I'm 25 or so away. So not too hard to do, but can't really do it without everyone here helping share and, and let everyone know what we're doing here. If you enjoy it, of course. Because I just want to play more games and spread joy about my favorite hobby. And you can help me do that. So I need to pick something. I've been talking and yakking and lost track of what I wanted to do. So what do we got out here now? We do have a tile with water and trees again, which we can continue this way. We have a grass, uh, wetlands, prairie that could fit up here but that doesn't work for placing a hawk so not as solid a plan for that one because we can pick up elk which we talked about placing out here because we do need animals next to the salmon if we did that so it's likely one of these two we talked about not caring as much about the salmon yet, tile, because we have set up our run, and now we want to set up for all the other animals that we need to create. Starting our elk runs aren't the worst idea, 
We did talk about needing to connect these waterways. And getting them around the salmon wouldn't be bad. So I think that may not... That may be our key option here. Or I take... Both of these do have bear options. And anyway, we talked about going bear here. Yeah, I think I need to make sure I set up for my bear set up here, like I was talking about. So I want the mountain one with the elk. I'm going to continue my mountain run out. Set my elk out here. And then I can start creating a circle of elk this direction. Okay, so we're going to lose that set. Do the slide again. Two more. One, two. Oh, come on. Show me the bears. The bears. So this may change up what we're doing a little bit, but we can deal with it. Another fox with multiple options. Get another elk, continue the elk run. You now if I grab this one, continue my, place it here, continue my forest. Potentially place a fox on it later get my elk to start moving too. That's extra points towards the salmon and towards the elk scenario at the same time. I think might be my strongest move at the moment. Yep, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make sure my greens touch to continue the forest. I'm going to do this so I give myself more options for spreading it. Place the elk there. I'm going to lose that tile over here. I'm going to do another shift, another shift, shift, shift. Another elk. Come on, bear. I can barely stand it. No bears. Okay. Though we did find a hawk. Which are helpful if we do it correctly, that is. Um, so we talked about wanting a fox here potentially. Salmon, we don't need to go farther on yet. Elk, well, we could continue our circle of elk. If we're going fox over here, foxes want pears. So we'll see if that's our best plot. Um, a hawk over here, if we did it, place it across here. It's a seven point run and work towards our next. Well, there's gonna be a hawk here. That's what we talked about wanting to do. So if we get stuff to go between it, hawk here helps the salmon. Connects our water system. I think I'm going to risk it. Because I'll leave the fox for next round if what I like doesn't come out. Yep, I'm going to take the hawk. So I'm going to set my water up here. Touching. Place the hawk down. So if we get a hawk up here, that's going to help score it across. Helps the salmon immediately. I'm going to lose the salmon hawk uh, set up. Sliding again. Sliding. Now I do have this wildlife token, so if I choose to, I could spend it to take any rain, uh, any combination of one tile, one token. Come on, give me a bear. Give me a bear. There's our bear. 
Okay, that was what I needed the most. What tile will help out for other connections right now, though? So I need something that can let us do a hawk here. Well, the bear's going to be out for a little bit. Because I like the fox token. I like the bear token. Tiles, I like hawk option. Uh, water systems. No, that may not. That may not. That's mountains. That's not water. This is plains and mountains. This I could get for here for sure. Extend my force because remember, force of seven or larger. I just score two points in the solo mode. May not be worth the scoring if it messes up my animals. Group size is seven more. Yeah, not as critical to do, even though I'm nowhere near any of them. I think what's critical is get work on my setup of those yet. Yeah. Even potential bears over here wouldn't be the worst. take this one to make sure we can get a hawk up here later do that so it's easier to continue my habitats I got picked up a fox and I placed here lose that set Okay. Oh, come on. I need more bears. And I need that hawk, too. Do I like that tile? What tiles do I like? I like the bear, I like the hawk. Salmon's not as critical. Elk is so so. Do I use. Do I want to pick up that elk, though? Not really. The habitat's not as. Helpful. The hawk does have its own. Will trigger its own habitat though. It's on a mountain. Could do that here. Would be strong enough because that's too. I think getting it here wouldn't be bad. Or out here. So we're that way and that way. Probably just grab the bear while I can. I think I'm gonna have to spend my wildlife token. And I think building around this fox next isn't my worst idea. No, I'll give us. If I leave that there, I'll take off. Yeah. I'm going, to, I'm going to spin that token, take this tile and the bear. So this gives me flexibility on a tile. Bear is going to go here. Uh, actually, I'm going to go. Yeah, bear there. And then, do I want to surround it? Continue the habitat. No, I want it to work. My salmon options. Hmm. 
Uh, maybe doing this, and then I could potentially go bears or continue my elks around. And that helps my habitat. Elk, tile gone. The slide, because it's the farthest left tile and token that were removed in this mode. One, two, one, two, come on, bears. You barely stand it. Give it to me. For salmon, of course. Get a little mix. Okay. Do I want to continue my salmon run, or do I... Yeah, I should probably just grab one of the hawks. And I think the easiest continuation... Because that wouldn't do that. Taking salmon only gets me one point. Getting the hawk fits me up for the fox and across the hawks. So I think I need to take it. So it's one of these two. If I take that one, I can potentially get a hawk later and token this one. I could work on my elk run. Temp fate and do it. I'll do this habitat touching so we have potential later. Get my hawk here. Well, I scored that set. Helps the fox as well. Remove this. Slide to the left. Give me that bear. Nope, a fox. Come on, bear. Let's do a little shake, shake. Hey, we got a bear. Okay, so if I... If I want a hawk way down here, I can score to get extra for it. But if I hawked over here, score hawk here. Just straight up, get me a token. Keeps the bear in play. Don't care about the salmon. Don't care about the fox as much. Yeah, so I'm going to take this set. Because this one's going to score across here. So I think I want to get this one to score. In this direction. Doesn't help my habitats as much. It's a keystone though. Placing the hawk on it is going to help me get one of these back. So I have more flexibility. And Beyond Dead 13's back. How's uh, relearning the game going? Pretty well. Um, fortunately, the rules are very straightforward. So it's more the strategy involved. Now, I didn't necessarily help myself in that. I did not go with the story or scoring cards. Because I like to challenge myself. It's more fun that way. If I'm going to make mistakes, might as well have an excuse for it, you know. Um, but unfortunately, my luck with drawing the animals I want to see at the right time have not happened as frequently as I like. So I'm piecing together what I want to find and hoping for the best. And it's not... I'm doing okay. But as you can see, the game is at least... Let's see, it's about a little more than halfway over. So I just reset for the next round and so like I talked about I'm more, I did the salmon run so those can score and everything touching it foxes score for pairs around it so I'm trying to get a bear here now which fortunately I have a bear out another fox here we got elk elk also score in a circular amount so I may grab that one later hawks score for basically animals in between the hawks uh, different ones so I've created two sets of two because each hawk can be used once. And then bears like to be in different size groups. So creating a group of two over here is already kind of happening. So I'm just deciding which tiles and tokens to pair up. Typically you take one top tile and one bottom uh, that's aligned with each other unless you spend one of these wildlife tokens, which I just gained one back. So it allows you to basically pick one and pick one. Or I believe you can also reset the token market. 
But right now, I think my best option, because I really want the spare. I don't care much about the fox. The hawk. The elk will stay there for a while until it shifts out down. This one I can continue habitat. If I can decide if I want to go elk around or if I want to do another salmon run. So I think that I like that tile so I don't have to spend my wildlife token. I'm going to do this, hopefully connecting my grand forest and place my bear over here. So then my this far left set always gets, farthest left always gets removed or farthest from the tile stack. And you shift these while playing solo. If you were playing multiplayer, I don't believe you'd remove any extra tiles between players' turns. Well, I, why did I just reveal two down there? I'm talking to myself and not paying attention. Mix those back in. Tiles and tokens. So let's see what comes out and then plan to do with it as we see. Now we talked about I can continue my elks around this way. Potentially go salmon here to help the fox. I also want to surround the salmon because that helps out a lot. But surrounding that the best choice is actually just another salmon. And then also paying attention to habitat. So a green and a bad. Pick that up. I don't want that fox towel as much. I do like the elk token. I can come up here. And then I can wait to decide salmon or elk down here. Because I've played what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I get to take seven more, because you basically get 20 turns. So if I'm taking seven more, so that means I would have to find at least two more salmon after this. Not the easiest, not guaranteed. I think the elk scoring potential is going to be a little bit higher than the salmon right now. So I don't care about that one as much. Fox takes a lot more to get high points. So I know I want the elk. But do I want to take a fox only option? Not really. I get something here. Cut next my potentially connect the mountains. If I get a bear onto it, that can create a larger bear group. I think that's what I want to do. So I'm going to spend my wildlife token so I can take a tile and a token that are not adjacent with each other. Take this mountain option with this elk. This mountain will help join these in case I want to try to get seven for a few more extra points. This elk, I'm going to go over here, continue my elk circle. Far uh, tile and token get removed. These both slide down until they're above and below each other. Again, two more come out. What do I want to see? I want to see, I think, elk or bear. Come on. Well, that's a hawk. Doesn't, don't like that one. And salmon. Okay. Well, two salmon are out. I think this is kind of telling me salmon may be the option down here for another salmon run. Unless I just continue it here and get my habitat. Because if I take a single salmon, well, that fox would have to go somewhere. And then I'd have to pick up a fox to put on it to help myself out. Not a great deal. Foxes can go here. It's already one pair. It's guaranteed three points. Probably not going to get a hop next to it. I'd have to take two hawks. Take the salmon. Take bear hawk. Continue the forest. I'm not going to. Because I don't see an elk habitat out, which I want for here. So I don't want to block myself in. I can continue the salmon run up here. Or down here. I couldn't place the salmon on it. 
all I could do is put the habitat, but if I took salmon and go here. Hawk can go on itself here, that's a waterway. But one would really score well with anything else. So not a great option for that one. This pairing is another fox. Unless I place it up here. Still on a three point. I think I need to. I don't want to risk it on the salmon though. I don't want to block myself with the salmon. But I might have to. What would y'all do in this situation? It's one of those kind of tricky rock in a hard place, not a ton of great options, but there's potential in it. Because the hawk could go here, but wouldn't pair well with anything. I'm just going to use my water. This tile, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to go salmon. And then I'm gonna put the mountain set up down here so it continues the habitat. Salmon, I'm gonna place here. So I do still have an option to go elk around the around the circle instead of salmon. So it still gives me options, but it does limit me a little bit. And we're starting to run out of options here. So there is another salmon tile at least. Oh, salmon. This may be the deciding factor. Yep, salmon, salmon. I think that just sealed fate for a salmon run. Because that has an elk, which I would like to hear. That leaves salmon to pick later. Fox. Not as important yet. But if I. Well, no, I could. Yeah. I'm just going to do this. So it allows me to continue my elk around that corner. Salmon's going to go here. I lose that one. Probably the best play. Well, I, I hope you're saying that and that you agree with what I did. Because I just saw what you said. Okay, we got bear and another salmon. Okay, so it's definitely a salmon rich environment at this point. Um, I do have a place for a bear, so I can extend that out with a salmon on it, but this salmon right here. Yeah, I think I need to do this now. Placing it here. Continue my salmon run, giving me a wildlife token, so I have flexibility for choosing in these last few rounds. Or it scores me a point. So either way, I have some options. Fox. Come on, elk. Bear. Okay. It's... Well, I can use a bear over here. If I need to. Now, if hawks had come out, I had all four other types between. That would have been a cool run. But hawks didn't come out enough. So this fox at least got two pairs. Bears, if I, it's one bear, it's a two point. Two bears is five points. Instead of three together is eight. Oh, any shape. It does say any shape, so it doesn't necessarily have to be a triangle, per se. It's 
helpful. So if I took this bear, fox and elk, do I set myself up for, for another fox? The salmon can't currently be placed, so I don't take that combo. A fox and hawk. I have a place for the fox, it would automatically score me three. But I have to take a hawk for that. And I have enough hawk spaces. Bear, salmon. I have enough bear spaces. So I could use the bear token, but I don't necessarily need more salmon spaces. It's extended far enough. This one at least gives me some options down here to place more animals. Like I could place a fox later here. That helps the habitats. At least a uh, bear going to go here because that's what I set myself up for earlier. So I have a three bear. That's going to get moved. That still leaves that bear option if I want to take a single bear later. Salmon. Hawk. Okay. So I could place the fox here. It's three points plus another point for the salmon, so that's a four point play. Pick up the bear, the single bear's two points. I can't, I could place it next to salmon for one extra point, so that's only three points. So I think grabbing fox is the most useful. But that also gives me a hawk landscape that's not as useful. One, two, three. I could continue this to four to make it bigger. Or I could ex oh my green's blocked in. Okay. One, two, three, four. I can make that five. And just place the bear on it, yeah. Uh, but placing the bear on it. So there's three points, fox is more. I think I'm going to spin this because it's still a one point difference. Get the fox now. Take a different tile, but that takes the bear away. Not a huge deal. But if the bear comes out. You know what? Never mind. I'm going to keep that. Go full risky. Take the bear. In that tile and save this other one. That's going to go away. I'm not going to look at what comes out next. I need to place first. So I think what I can do here is set myself up like I talked about here. Continue the green. Place a bear. If I end up with another bear placement here, it might still be the fox. But I'm just about out of turns. Okay, well, there's the fox I talked about. There's the elk. Okay, so if I take the elk token, it will give me a boost of four points. Five, it's a five point play. The fox gives me four points. So this is the last tile I can take. Uh, so the hawk token isn't useful, so I d no, I don't care about that. Extending the salmon doesn't really do anything for me, so I don't care about that animal token. Now let's look at the tiles. Which ones benefit me potentially for habitats? That's a match. That's a continuation match. Green. Oh, 
Actually, if I go elk, it's four points. Five points. So it's higher point than the fox. Don't care about that tile. It's just straight green. It could go here just as easily. The big green force is blocked off, so I don't care about that as much. It's one, two, three, four, five, so it won't get to seven no matter what. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Already at seven, so I get two points for that, so I don't need that. And the water part won't help. Uh, the green here. Yeah, I don't think I even need to spend my wildlife token. I'm just going to take this one, place this down here for the habitat. Elk here. Oh, and I realized the one I just placed is just a hair off of screen for y'all. So I'm going to attempt to shift my whole system upward to help out. Sorry about that. So here is my final system because there's not enough tiles to draw back into this. This is why I was flipping over this time just so I knew it was last and what I do didn't like. There's one more. Set them all aside. Let's go over scoring. Find myself a writing utensil and let's go over how to score this. Uh, just for fun, I'll put that there so y'all can see. Okay, so solo. Gotta go that I played. Um, for the bears, so we said the grizzly bears score points based on their group size of any shape. We have a group of one, which is worth two points, and a group of three right here worth eight points. So that's ten points just for my bears. So I'm going to take this and just turn it upside down to show we've scored it, but y'all can still see it on screen. I could have flipped over, but you can tell what I'm doing. Next up is the elk. So because we had the elk ring, scores per group of elk in a circular formation, and each elk may only serve for a single group, we have a circular system of four elk. So that is worth 12 points. Okay, next up on the list is salmon. So we did scores per salmon and per animal adjacent to run of at least three. Runs may not be adjacent. So first off, we have two different salmon runs. We have this one, because it's at least three long for this card, and then three long here. So I'm gonna start with this one right here. So we get one point for the salmon, one for each animal adjacent to those salmon. So we got three for the salmon, plus one, two, three, four, five, eight points for that run. And then we're going to score the next run, because this also has three, so that's three for the salmon. And then adjacent makes it four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for that one. So that alone scored us 17 points. Well, thanks for hanging out while you could, uh, Jelly Pie. I do appreciate you showing up, hanging out. I hope you enjoyed your time here, and I hope you are prepared to have a wonderful weekend and that you're able to, to play some more games and also spread some joy to others. Okay, so we scored the salmon. Next up, we're going to score hawks. In this case... We're scores for, uh, we did the territorial, so we're scoring for each pair of hawks numbered of unique number of unique animals types between the hawks. Each hawk can count once. We have four hawks, so we're going line of sight between hawks. We have a set here, this hawk and this hawk. Two between is seven points. Two between this set is also seven points. So we've used each hawk once, scored between them. Because it you can use those animals between multiple times just not the hawks multiple times. So that right there is 14. Next up are our foxes. 
Now foxes score for each um, unique adjacent animal pair. So in this instance, this fox right here has one, two, three pairs for seven points. And this fox has two different pairs, which is five points. Because you don't, this whole system of elk does not count as separate pairs because they are not unique. So in this case, it's five plus seven is 12. So let me verify how they say. I think this W right here is just wildlife total. And then you get a habitat total. So let's see how we did for our wildlife total. We're going to go 10 plus 12 is 22 plus 17 is 39 plus 14 is 53 plus 12 is 65. I think I did that right. 10 plus 12, 22, plus the 8 is 30, 39, 43, 53, plus 12, 65, yep. So now let's figure out and make sure we score the habitats correctly. So the habitat corridors for each player score one point per habitat tile in the largest continuous habitat corridor. So a group of a connected habitat type in each of the five habitats. So here it's going to show us mountains. So our largest mountain set was right here for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that is a seven point corridor of mountains. Next up are our forests. Our largest group of forests is going to be right here. One, two, three, four, five. Next up are our uh, plains and prairies. Largest is going to be two. And then next up we have our wetlands. Largest is going to be down here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then, of course, we also have our waterways, which this likes to call them the rivers, just to verify. That's how they're named. Our largest river system was actually pretty small. We didn't get those connected as well. So we only had three together in this scenario. And then as a solo, so for habitat tile corridor majority, when playing solo, two points bonus for each habitat type with a group size of seven or more. We did that once, so I'm going to add two to that setup right there, and then total up all of this. Seven plus two, nine plus five is fourteen. Plus two is sixteen. Plus six is twenty-two. Plus three is twenty-five. And then I had one wildlife token remaining, so sixty-five plus twenty-five. That's going to be eighty. Ninety plus one is ninety-one total. So let's see how that compares to the solo scores and how well that actually is. So for solo scoring, here's our list. If you get 60 or more, it's a good start. 70 plus, you're getting it. 80 plus, very good. 90 plus, excellent. And so we got 91, so we did excellent. And then if you get a hundred or more that's elite we're not there yet we'll get there eventually 110 or more you've ascended so i would say for a first solo playthrough of this not having played this for over two years since i have to play test i feel that was a very solid game felt we did very well and i hope you enjoyed this as well so as you can see the rules are very straightforward and easy it's the strategy that's going to get you. So again, this is Cascadia. It plays one to four players, 30 to 45 minutes, ages 10 and up. And like I said before, I have one additional copy that I will be planning to give away once my Twitch follower count hits 100. And we're only about 25 or so away from that. But incentive to a help me build up and, sp and spread more joy, play more games. I want to spread that joy to you, help you play games as well. Okay, so I do hope everyone has a wonderful evening. 
and a wonderful weekend as well, playing games, spreading joy, and just in general being wonderful people that I know you are. So with that, let's have a good night, play games, and spread joy.